Hey guys, it's Housewife from Heels, and I have decided to give you a designer shoe collection video because I just felt like it and I figured you guys would enjoy it. So I'm going to start out with Jimmy Choo because I already have them on, so might as well start out with that. So if you guys have seen my channel, then you have seen me unbox all of these and give reviews for all of them with the exception of the Bings, which I have yet to actually wear out yet. So, I love Jimmy Choo. They are known to be really comfortable. I'm wearing 120 boots that I actually got in an outlet for $200 for, I think, a savings of $1,300 off. And these have given me no issues being basically 5-inch pump boots. And other than that, Jimmy Choo has never really given me any issues with the exception of these, which I know gave a bunch of people issues, which is why they went on sale in the first place. So the Lou's do not recommend, and don't worry, I will be trying these all on later in the second half of this video. So don't fret those that just want to see me try them on, but I am going to give my spiel if you guys know me. So I do not recommend the lose, and that will really be all I say about them. So the less I say, the less I like the shoe. These I have not worn out because I have had no fancy occasions to wear them out to. And I feel these are sort of a shoe that can really only be worn with a dress. If you wear them with pants, it can kind of cut your foot off and look a little bit weird. At least that's my opinion. If you happen to like them with pants, then do you. I salute you. These I actually got for my birthday last year, and I got these at the outlet as well for, I think, a $700 savings. So I was really happy about that, and a little fun fact about Jimmy Choo is that if you sign up for their emails on your birthday month, they will give you $100 off a $300 plus purchase, so you can actually go to the outlet and save even more money with that. So definitely use that if you are on the market for Jimmy Choo shoes. And finally, we have my first ever pair of Jimmy Choo's. If you are familiar with my channel, then you would know I am a huge sucker for a 120mm basic black pump. And these I paid full price for. I was on the hunt for them, and the Jimmy Choo on Rodeo and Beverly Hills happened to have them. And I have worn these half to death. These, I will say, if you're worried about choosing between these or a Louis Vuitton Silkate, which I will show you later, I will caution that these have some of the thickest leather on a shoe I have ever encountered, and they took me months and months and months to break in. So if you are on the market for a Jimmy Choo Anook, then just know that they tend to go true to size for those with very narrow feet like myself, or they are very similar to a so okay where most people have to go up a half size and have fun finding them on sale in a black patent if that's what you're looking for, but they also come in sort of a very cherry red if that's what you're looking for as well. So that will be my spiel on Jimmy Choo, and we will move on into Louis Vuitton. Alright guys, so I am back and I am here with my happy little collection of Christian Louboutin shoes. So if you can't tell from my little selection and what I'm currently wearing, I am half obsessed with Socates. They are one of, if not my favorite style of Louboutin. Are they everyone's favorite to wear? Absolutely not. If you are watching this thinking about purchasing a pair of Socates, I would strongly advise you to watch my sizing guide video, which I will link up below. And I would strongly recommend getting a cheaper pair of 120mm shoes before you go investing in a pair as notorious as a Socate. Um, an example of a cheaper pair would be, say, from Only Maker. I believe you can get a pair of 120s for I think $50 or so, which is a much less riskier take than an $800 shoe that you may realize that you just detest entirely when you actually wear them, because a 120 is no joke. Now, if you are interested in the look of a 120 sandal, I only have one 120 sandal from Christian Louboutin, and that is my 
Choka Luxes. I would also caution, make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into when you are getting a 120. Granted, these have a slight platform, but it is only from seven to 10 millimeters. It sort of degrades from sort of being thicker and then getting slimmer the outer it goes. So I just strongly advise, know what you're getting yourself into when you get yourself into a 120. And as far as designer footwear goes, as far as really steep heel pitches, Louboutin is generally where you're going to find most of those because he tends to make more risque footwear than the average designer that you see. Now Louboutin also does make varying sizes. It's not just the nearly five inch heels that he's so known for. He does make 100s like the Pagal Feliz that I know are very popular. Now if you are interested in something even lower, then he does make variations of different shoes and different sizes. These are the new Very Privé. I wish I could have gotten my hands on the 120, but I couldn't. I can only get my hands on the 100 because I found these at the outlet for 20% off. And if I have to lose 20% of my heel height to say 20%, then that is something I will do. You will find that on my channel often. I'm very shameless when it comes to actually saving money on designer shoes. Louboutin also does 100 millimeter sandals, but I will caution you with sandals in general from Louboutin, regardless of the height, is that there's this little piece of fabric on the shoe that if worn for an extended period of time, it can create a hot spot. So just keep in mind, and the leather, while it's not too tight on the sandals, like say a so cape that's very restrictive, these can rub, so I would caution you to put some Vaseline or anti-blister stick or something like that on your foot before going out and thinking you can wear Louboutin sandals for a whole day. I do it, but I'm psychotic, in case you haven't noticed by the three pairs of sewcase that I wear. According to the salespeople at Louboutin, I'm one of the 5% of the population that can actually wear them. And finally, what I consider to be the most comfortable Louboutin is the Eriza. Now there are varying opinions on the Eriza. Some people say that the toe box around the sole of your foot can kind of dig in. I haven't really experienced this. I found these to be quite comfortable and easy to break in. They are actually becoming a little bit too big for me since I have worn them so often, so I might have to put a little gel insert in because even the patent will break in on you. Just because they're $800 doesn't mean that leather doesn't stretch. <laughs> but other than that, that will conclude my little spiel on Louboutin, and then I think we will be moving into a much lesser known brand, Cassidy. Okay, so I'm here with my Cassidy blades. I only have the blades. They clock in at a 115 millimeter, so slightly less steep than the Christian Louboutin Soakates, like I was talking about a little bit earlier but they actually do feel like a Socate on. Granted, I have not really worn either of these out yet because I intend to film it for you guys in a first use, first impressions video. So I've been holding on to these puppies for you guys until I actually have a chance to go out and film them. But other than that, there is a 10 millimeter hidden platform in the pump so that way it doesn't have that big of a steep feel, but they oddly feel very similar to a Socate when actually on the foot. And if you are interested in blades, if you're not super, super picky, when they go on sale, seasonally, they go for half off. For instance, I got these half off, I think for around $350, they do retail for roughly around the same amount as a Louboutin, maybe slightly less. Louboutin currently is $7.95. These are typically $7.50, but I got these half off. These I did not purchase myself. These one of my wonderful subscribers sent to me, which I am very appreciative of. So 
I absolutely adore the look of these. If you're looking for something a little bit edgier than a Louboutin or something not as well known, then if you are looking for a statement piece, then the blade is the way to go because there is no heel like it. You are literally wearing a shank on your foot. So for that, I love them, and I believe we'll be moving on into Manolo's next. So we are now here with Manolo's, and these shoes I initially sought out because I have heard just how comfortable they are, and after breaking in shoes like, say, Louboutins, your feet can get swollen and really unhappy, but at the same time, I'm the type of person where I like to wear heels a lot, all the time. So when I'm recovering from, say, breaking in a Socate, which can be quite challenging and tough on your feet, I like something more comfortable to wear, and I was fortunate enough to be able to find the BB pumps at an outlet for $3.99. I believe that they retail for about $6.50, $700. I don't remember exactly, but I will put a link in the description for every shoe that is currently available in this whole collection, so that way if you see something you like, you can go after it. The BB pumps I would recommend to everyone who is comfortable wearing a 105 millimeter heel who just is someone that wants to be comfortable while wearing heels. But I would caution that if you can, get it in a material that is not the Napa leather because it is very buttery and while that makes the shoe very comfortable, <laughs> it can make it quite fragile. I purchased these with a little bit of a scuff on them already, which is probably why they were at an outlet in the first place. And since wearing them, and if you cannot see, they actually have quite a skinny heel. I would say just as skinny or skinnier than that on a usual Louboutin. And I've already messed up one of the heels just from walking around. So I would caution you that if you're someone who struggles with stability on heels, since this heel is so skinny, then the BB pump may not be for you. But if all you care about is just being comfortable in a pair of heels, from all means, go purchase them. I would recommend them to you if you can handle a very skinny, skinny heel. Now, these ones, I'm sure everyone and their mother has seen these. I'm sure everyone on YouTube has done a video on these. I already know I have along with these in the same video. I've yet to review them, but if I were to give a sort of mini review, these are just as comfortable. I would strongly recommend that if you are getting the Hungizis in the satin, like the typical material that it comes in, the Sex in the City shoe, granted mine aren't blue, but you get what I'm saying, then I would strongly recommend getting a spray that will protect satin because I have already damaged one of the heels. You can't see it on camera, but I already have a little bit of the satin has already come up even though I did spray them with protectant. So be very mindful. These also have come in just straight up leather, different materials, different colors. You can really mix and match and have it totally your way with Hangizis if budget isn't really a priority of yours. If budget is a priority of yours, then you see Manolo's going on sale all the time. The BB pumps and the Hungizis. Granted, I did not pay for these. One of my subscribers very generously sent them to me, and I am very grateful for that because these are quite expensive, and I will cherish them always. They're one of my favorites in my collection, and they stay very on brand for being as comfortable as everyone makes Manolo's out to be. So if comfort is what you're looking for, Manolo's are where it's at. And I think I'm going to show you guys my only pair of Valentinos next. So I'm back and I decided to not only show you my Valentinos, which I'm currently wearing, I decided to show you my Aquazoras since these are my only pair of Aquazoras themselves, so I figured they could both be in sort of like the same spiel. Now, these rock studs I got at an outlet for $660. These retail for, I believe, $1,100. However, if you are someone who's looking to get rock studs or, I don't know, gifting them to somebody, 
I think they are actually worth it. Out of all the designer shoes in my collection, I tend to wear these the most. I tend to gravitate to them to the I tend to gravitate to them the most. These have definitely seen a lot of wear. They do not create hot spots, blisters, they're very easy to go out and run around in. I've worn these all day before and been perfectly fine. The toe box is just wide enough to accommodate most people's feet. And as far as sizing is concerned, since I know if you're going to be spending $1,100, which is really up there on shoes, you might want to know about sizing in these, especially if I'm saying these are one of my favorites and highly recommend them. For most people, I would say go true to size. I actually went down half a size because that's all the outlet had, and I figured I'm going to squeeze my foot and do it one way or the other. But actually, they fit better than a size 6, which is my actual true to size for those who don't know. So I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend Rock Studs, especially if you're someone who fears heel slippage with it actually having to be strapped on. Your heel ain't going nowhere. It's sort of like a cross between a pump and a sandal, and I think they are absolutely wonderful. Strongly recommend them. I think they go with practically anything. They can be dressed up or down. It does not matter. These are one of my absolute favorites. I just wish they made them in a 120 because I think that would look really cool. And if you are one of my very long time viewers, I would strongly discourage you from getting the Rock Stud Gladiator Sandal, which I had many moons ago and consigned many moons ago because the strap that goes around your toes is simply too narrow, even for myself, and I have a very narrow foot. To demonstrate that, I go down half a size in Socates because of how narrow my feet are. So don't get the sandals, get the pumps. I have already consigned my sandals, they are long gone. Someone has my rock stud somewhere, who knows where. And speaking of sandals, I'm going to transition into talking about my Aquazura Supermodel sandals. These are no longer available. You, if you can find them, you would have to find them on one of those sites that just has very much older shoes, like very several years ago seasonal type shoes. And these are several seasons ago from Aquazura. I found them at an outlet almost a year ago. I believe it was at Saks Off Fit for $300. These retailed, I believe, $800 to $1,000. I would have to look it up just to be sure, but overall they are quite comfortable. Aquazura is known to be a stylish yet comfortable brand similar to a Manolo. I would love to try out the little bow tie pumps that they have, but I don't have them yet. So for now, I can only base my opinion on these. Something that I love about these is that all the straps on these are adjustable, so no matter how wide or narrow your foot is, these will accommodate you, and I can only assume that the brand does that with other kinds of sandals that they may come out with. And what's also nice about these is that you don't have to strap every single strap to get them on. They just have a zipper. You can go up and down. So it's just easy peasy on and off. And I think that about does it for my collection. And Oh wait, no, I'm wrong. We have Stuart Weitzman. So Stuart Weitzman, and then that will conclude my little spiel. And then you guys can see the try-on if you're interested in seeing close-ups of how they look on the foot. So Stuart Weitzman it is, and then we will do the try-on. Okay, so I'm here with my last designer for my whole collection, which is Stuart Weitzman. I only have two pairs. However, I am looking into trying the Stuart 110s, which just came out. They are a standard pump. As you can see, I don't have any Stuart Weitzman pumps, but I am looking to actually try those out. So that way I can give my opinions and see how I feel about them, because I love very high pumps, <laughs> in case you could not tell, which I'm sure all of you are able to tell I love a high pump. Now. I also love comfortable boots, and these are no exception. You see these, they are called Highlands on celebrities all the time. They have been available for years and years and years. They retail, I believe, for $8.95, unless you happen to find them on sale, which you can. They just typically are not in 
black or nude. They're usually in another color, like say a burgundy was the last I saw them on sale for. These I happened to get lucky and find at an outlet. I think I paid $3.30 if I remember correctly, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Loyal viewers who know exactly how much I actually paid for these. <laughs> um, I would, however, say that if you are going to get the Highland boots, I would get the leather over the suede because the suede you have to baby or it gets damaged. These shoes have already taken damage. It's some of the damage I know where it came from, some of the other damage I have no idea. <laughs> Even with suede protectant being sprayed all over them, they have taken damage just for me wearing these out and about and doing whatever in them because they are just so comfortable. You will naturally gravitate towards them if you have them in your shoe wardrobe. And something else I really like about them is that they are very form-fitting to very skinny, narrow legs because I have a very teensy little figure and I often have a hard time finding boots that are form-fitting. And these actually are. So if you're someone who has very narrow legs, then I would strongly recommend these. And these also do come in stretchy material, so if you have a little bit thicker legs, then they can accommodate you as well. And for feet, Stuart Weitzman does something fairly unique for all their shoes, sandals, pumps, everything, where you can pick between narrow, average, and wide. So depending on the size of your foot, you can choose what is the most accommodating for you, which I think is awesome. I've always gone with average, even though I have a narrow foot, but if I were to, oh, let's say, get the Stuart 110s, I probably would go for narrow, because if I don't, chances are I'll have heel slippage, and that would be sad. Now I'm going to talk about my sandals. If you are getting sandals, I would try to find them on sale. It, Stuart Weitzman is a brand that always has sales going on. If you sign up for their emails, you can get something full price for 15% off, but you can often be alerted for when sales as high as 40% off go. Just like these shoes that I got, the LC sandals, it's part of the nudist line. And it's basically the Alina sandal, but with higher straps that go up the leg. And these are actually quite comfortable, but I will say that the leather strap can dig in if you're walking around for a while, but that's just something that I'm going to have to break these in. And other than that, I believe that concludes my little spiel part of this video, and then we can get into the meat and potatoes, which is me actually trying on the shoes for you. So I will see you in a bit. So I'm going to continue with a little spiel on each individual pair of shoes. These are the Giselle boots. These are no longer available, but Jimmy Choo comes out with boots all the time. You can always find boots online no matter what. So you can definitely find an over-the-knee boot. Very similar. Jimmy Choo boots, from my understanding, are overall quite comfortable. However, you can't usually find them as affordable as I did these. So we're going to move on to the next one, which are the Lou's. So my lesson learned here is don't just buy shoes because they happen to be on sale because I unfortunately bought these way too small. So many people had sizing issues, which is why they went on sale in the first place. But I was just so excited for shoes that I went and forked out the 400 or so dollars anyway on them. So just because a shoe goes on sale or a designer has a sale doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy. So if you see these online, I don't recommend, or if you do, I would definitely go up a half size in these. These are the Bings. Everyone goes crazy for the Bings. I actually have not worn these yet because I think they kind of look weird with pants and I predominantly wear pants, but if I ever have an event where I can wear a stiletto with a dress, then I know exactly what to wear. And I would say for people with narrow feet like myself, they do feel a bit loose, but if you're someone with an average foot, I would say go for it. I could definitely see why these are really popular amongst most people, but these kind of always feel like they're going to fall off on me, so if you're narrow-footed like me, I don't really recommend these. So these are the K 
Kate 120s. These are actually quite comfortable for a 120 sandal. I got these at the outlet not too long ago. So a lesson learned with these is don't be afraid of the outlets. If you have an outlet near you, I strongly recommend going there. You can definitely find some great deals and you can stack it with a birthday coupon like I told you about to save even more. These retailed for about $1,000. I paid a little over $300. So don't be afraid of outlets. Go ahead, buy off season. No one will be mad at you. I love the Anooks. These are less comfy than the Socate, but if you are hardcore dedicated to breaking these in like I was, then they can definitely be worn. However, I would tell people to proceed with caution when going and investing nearly $800 on a 120 because most people cannot handle a single sole 120. And I would say for those, I didn't get on sale, but I see them on sites like Rula La on sale often. Granted, not always in the black patent, but they can be found if you search hard enough. We're going to start the Louboutin collection with the Psychic Red Luby So Cape. I absolutely love this color, this material. It appears to be an all patent, but just this sort of reflective true red is stunning but if you're someone that can't handle a so cape but you love the color of these then you can definitely find them in several other styles in a much more forgiving heel height like say a 100 in the hot chick pumps or the rosalie 100 sandals if you're looking for something a little bit more demure but with the same look these are my black patent soakates. I have recently acquired these, and with these I have learned that I am one of the freaks of nature that actually goes down half a size in a soakate, which I have never heard of until then. So I would strongly recommend watching my sizing guide so that way you can tell if a Louboutin would be too big of a fit on you because that's not something you hear discussed about too often online and I want to help my narrow <laughs> feeted folk out like myself for when they go and invest $800 on a pair of shoes because it's sad when they're too big like the ones coming up next. These are my Twal Canvas so, Kate's, these deceived me in sizing because the canvas is a very stiff material, so it kind of made me think that it fit better, but eventually, after sweating, I had heel slippage anyway. So, if you are buying unconventional material, Louboutins, I would strongly recommend trying them on and making sure that they are very, very tight on your foot. Not like chokehold, but tight enough to where you can't pop it out like in my sizing guide. These are my Choka Luxes. I absolutely love these, but these make me question the Louboutin sizing because in a 120 sandal, which is otherwise not different than a 100 millimeter sandal by any other means than height, these I go into a size 6, which is my true to size. As you'll see later in my 100 millimeter sandals, I actually go up half a size or I get cliffhangers. So my narrow feeted people are going to be on a conquest figuring out their size. So I hope you can learn from me because nobody wants cliffhangers. These are my Pagolfalis. With these, I made the discovery of the only Louboutin outlet in the world in Cabazon, California. So if you are fortunate like myself, you can actually go to a Louboutin outlet as well as many other outlets by many other designers, not just Christian Louboutin. But at the outlet, if you are fortunate enough to live there, you can get shoes up to 40% off, which is the equivalent of the end of season sales at the regular Louboutin boutiques, which I think is amazing since I love getting a deal on lubes. These are the new very Privés. These I would not really recommend for narrow-footed people in the 100 millimeter height because I tend to get heel slippage in these. But if I were to go down a half size, I would have cliffhangers, which as I said before, is not really a look I'm going for. So I'm hoping if I can ever acquire these in the 120 millimeter height, that similar to the sandals that I showed you, 
the the sizing would sort of change and I could go down a half size and then have the same peep toe look but without the issues of my feet falling out of them all the time. <laughs> These are my Mafaldina spikes. These are no longer available but they are making new variations at the moment such as wedges for the summer as of time of recording this. If you like the look of the spike sandal and are sad that these are no longer available, then no fear because they have something very similar, always available, very popular, called the Sew so Me Spiked Sandal. It's not exactly like this, but it is a very similar look if you are someone going for that spiked sandal, which obviously I love the look of that too. So overall, I would highly recommend Louboutin sandals. I love them, just make sure to not blister. Speaking of blisters, if you want to prevent blistering in your Louboutins, I would recommend if you have brand new shoes, no matter what the style, break them in at home, just sit and watch TV while wearing them, just let your feet kind of hang out in them while doing not a whole lot, just the warmth from your feet will make them break in over time while doing that without creating any blisters, which is no fun for anyone. But if you are looking for a first pair recommendation of Louboutins, I could not recommend the Eriza enough. I absolutely love them, and I've already half worn them to death, like I kind of said before. So, yeah. So now we are moving on into Cassidy blades. These are my black Nappa blades. I have yet to wear them out, as I've said before, and I absolutely love the look of these. However, I understand that not everyone could probably handle even a 115 millimeter heel. So Cassidy does make different variations of these in different sizes for people who might have issues with something so steep and they also make things like sandals, boots, pretty much whatever your little heart desire. And Cassidy will make. They make anything and everything with a blade so no fear if these are not for you. And like I said with different variations they also can come in every color under the sun. They make different patterns, different materials, it does not matter. So long as you pay attention or even just subscribe to the email that they give out if you sign up, then you can always find a blade that is for you and you can regularly find them half off all the time. So don't pay full price unless you're going for like the first pair of these which was the black Nappa with the silver blade. These are my Manolo Blahnik BB pumps as you saw earlier and I adore these. These are one of my most comfortable shoes in my collection. I wear them all the time. I am probably going to wear them to death. But you don't have to get the Nappa as I have. You can actually find these in many different variations. They come in many sizes and these often go on sale in the 105 heel height which is it gives you much more leeway than the Hangizi because I often find the Hangizi on sale but in a lower heel height than what you see here, the 105. I'm actually looking for these in the 115, which I'm positive I can never find on sale. So hopefully one day I can acquire them with a little bit of the steeper heel pitch because I'm psycho like that. But if you don't care about having a 105, you just want the look, or you even want a smaller heel than what is shown here, you can always find them on sale, varying from, I believe, 65 millimeters up to the 105. I see them on Rulala for $6.99 often, whereas these I know clocked in at $1,045 USD, which I know a lot of people cannot justify. These are my Valentino pumps, which as I said before, I absolutely love. However, before forking out the 1100 that these would cost, I would strongly encourage you to look online, see if you can find them on sale. They do go on sale often. I've been recommending the site Rula Law often because you can find sales on legitimate designer goods. I have seen rock studs before for I believe $6.99 but definitely not $1100. So 
don't pay full price. That is what I would recommend for these. I'd highly recommend buying them, but they are absolutely worth the wait to save several hundred dollars if you don't want to spend well over a thousand. These are the Aquazura Supermodel sandals. As I said before, these are no longer available, but I'm a little bit iffy about sandals by Aquazura because I notice on the right foot, I don't know if this is a defect of just this exact shoe or the style of the shoe, but it feels very unstable on the right foot for some reason. I don't know the exact reasoning why, but I would caution you that if you suffer from not feeling very stable in heels, I don't exactly recommend these. But I have heard that the tequila sandal, while very expensive, I have not heard of anyone having any stability issues in those. So hopefully one day I can try out the tequila sandals for you and tell you what I think. Here we have the Stuart Weitzman Highland boots. I absolutely love these, but I know not everyone wants a high-heeled boot, so Stuart Weitzman does come with different variations of boots, ranging anywhere from being absolutely flat on the ground to a 90 millimeter. Do I wish that he made higher-heeled boots? Yeah, but I'll stick with the 90 millimeter for now, and I just hope that one day I can get these in the leather material. And finally, we have the LC sandal. These were actually my first pair of Stuart Weitzman's. I do actually quite like these, but for people who don't or just want something more simple, then they have different variations of the nudist inspired sandals, including the 115 actual nudist sandal, which I hope to one day acquire, but they are very difficult to find, unfortunately, so hopefully one day, but for now I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you learned something, or maybe you just like to watch me walk around in and talk about shoes, because I know I like doing it. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video and in the next pair of shoes. Bye!